Live from Radio Row in Las Vegas, Nevada, Super Bowl week, baby, 49ers and Chiefs rematch. Some of the biggest names in sports and entertainment will be right here. Presented by Roan Apparel, it's The Jake Asman Show. Super Bowl Radio Row, joining me right now on The Jake Asman Show is all-pro New York Jets linebacker, C.J. Mosley. C.J., what's going on? Not much here at Radio Row, hanging out, making making conversation. Let's be real. You guys wish you were playing in this game. And we, we as Jet fans thought, hey, you know, this, this could be the year the New York Jets make not one but two trips to Vegas. Yeah, that was – we talked about it. Um, when, we was, when we was here for, for the Raiders game, you know, we talked about being back here. But, you know, it wasn't what the meant to be this year. So, I have another opportunity to go for it next year. You know, for you personally, when a season ends, how long does it take to kind of let your body recover? What are some of the steps you do at this stage in your career to kind of maybe decompress after such a long season? Well, it's, it's, it's always different because obviously if you're injured, you got to, that's a whole nother process you got to deal with. So, you know, thankfully this year we came out healthy, no surgeries, no anything like that. So your body really just has to make the adjustment because you're still going to wake up early because you're just used to getting up every single morning, going into the building. And, um, you know, for me, it took about two weeks for my body to realize, like, I wasn't playing anymore because I was like, the playoff game was going, and I like, still felt like I still had a lot of energy <laughs> while I was ready to roll. So um, so usually this time, like, after, you know, Pro Bowl, Super Bowl, that's about a month out, like from the regular season end, and then that's kind of when I started, you know, picking things back up. How difficult uh, was the season for you? We know about the, the hype and the expectations. As a Jet fan, it was the most excited I had been since 2010, the last time the team was on hard knocks and made the playoffs. I mean, take us through kind of the emotional roller coaster that was the season. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, you talk about the beginning, um, you know, the expectation, the excitement, the all-season hype about if we get Aaron. Um, now, even I got hyped into it. You know, I, I was, well, at the time, you had to subscribe for the Pat McAfee show. Now, I bought the little subscription. <laughs> and uh, it was funny because I was, like, you know, anticipating, you know, hearing – what we about to hear about Aaron, and at the end of the day, he just said that he wanted to play for the Jets. I'm like, all right, well, that's that's good to know. <laughs> but uh, once he signed, you know, it was you know, it was time to go to work. So, man, we we grinded all camp. Uh, had a great you know OTAs, uh, getting to know him, you know, watching him work, just you know, just seeing his game, and you know, really appreciate it. Um, I know at 21, we, we practiced to get them against them in um in training camp, you know, the, for the joint practice. So, like, I saw him practice a little bit, but not too much, but just to see him every day work, see his work ethic, and just see the team and, like, everybody just grow around, you know, him being there. Like, it, like things really got serious once he signed. So, I like, that was cool to see and watch. Um, but, you know, once, you know, the you know, the, the lights and all that went away and the season started, started to go, obviously he had the injury. So, um, from that moment on, um, my mindset was, you know, like, how can I what's, how can I get everybody motivated and how can, you know, we play – to the expectation as if he was still playing, like if he was still our quarterback. Uh, you know, obviously you got to deal with injuries and it's hard to replace, a, you know, a talent like that. But at the end of the day, it's a team sport and, you know, the, the most disciplined uh, teams win the game and the people that, you know, do things most consistently win the games. You know, for you, it, it, it feels like the defense, and you guys have been in the spot now the last couple of years, the defense is always trying to lead the way carry the team is that taxing is that exhausting i mean you guys are on the field a lot you guys are basically being asked to shut down opponents every week because i mean i, th I think the stat was in 13 of 17 games the jet offense scored zero or one touchdowns this year like as a defensive captain how difficult is that every week knowing if you guys don't play at your very best it's going to be tough to win that day um i mean it's tough but you know at the end of the day you want to be at your best all time so every single um Every single possession or every single game, you ask our defense to go out there and be great, then, you know, let's, let's be up for that challenge. You know, it's it's hard to be 100%. So, I mean, you're going to make mistakes, but, you know, why not try to strive for that? And, you know, once the offense get it going, now that's just going to make our job easy. So now we got a whole bunch of callus on our defense that we built for. And now you're giving us rest and now you're giving us points. So when, when that day comes, you know, it's going to be dangerous. I know you have a very close relationship with your head coach, Robert Sala. He has talked openly about how important you are to him, how important you are to the team. When you hear your coach facing the criticism that he has been taking publicly, kind of what goes through your mind? And can you defend your coach a little bit? Tell us why Robert Sala is the right head coach for the Jets going forward. Uh, well, I would say this, you know, anytime you're in New York and you're the new name, a new face, and it's a loss, and there's a lot of losses going, like, they're going to attack you. Like, I've, I've been attacked, you know, even though I get all the praises now. But when I first got hurt, when I opted out, you know, I was the bad guy. So, 
Um, Not to me, by the way. I would like to throw that out there. I appreciate it. But at the end of the day, you know, all that is noise. And that's what, you know, Coach Sal always talks about, you know, um, ignoring the noise, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. Um, you know, this, this business is about winning, uh, winning football games and being consistent. And, um, you know, to, to me, you no know, Coach Sal is the right guy for this job. You know, his, his defense, his style, uh, the, the coaching staff, the trainers, the – you know, think about the nutritionist, like all those little things that he had to say okay to, you know, those things have, have made made this second part of my career, like, take off. So I have a whole bunch of respect for him when he's talking um, in a team room or me and him just having one-on-one conversations or I'm listening to his interviews. Like, I'm telling you, like, the things that he say, I'm saying it in my head as well. So, you know, me and him are on the same page on a lot of things. Like, even though, like, I'm not as open, like, I'm not about to just – you know, go just have a big conversation sure. with him and talk. But you know, I have a lot of respect for him, and you know, I know I know what he wants his football team to look like. He wants the defense to be fast, dirty, making big plays, D line getting after it, special teams being consistent, controlling controlling the field, you know, and offense being explosive, and uh, you know having a great run game behind it. So I mean, he's not asking for a lot. We just got to go out there and do it. So um, I feel. You know, it's at a certain point it comes to the players to go out there and, and make sure we're executing and not not making our coaches look silly out there. So you know, I was gonna play a part where it's you know where it's comes with player personnel, but at the end of the day, you know, we all we all there to win football games and you know and have our names enshrined in something that a lot of people can't say and that's winning a, a Super Bowl in, in New York or just being a champion in New York. So we all want that goal. So um I feel like it's up to all of us to make sure that we have each other back and that's going out there and execute. There's a lot of Jeff fans who looked at this past year and said, man, this is why we can't have nice things. And we finally have the quarterback and four plays in, look what happens. To the Jet fans out there who are down in the dumps, who look at this team and just think, hey, it's never going to get right. Why will things be different next season for the Jets? Yeah, I'm uh, sorry we got to ask this question again, man, but it's it's about blind faith and a blind belief. You know, um, you know envisioning and, and wanting what people can't see or what people don't believe, like, yeah, a lot of people don't believe they're just going to win a, win a championship again. A lot of people don't believe that you know, the Jets will ever make the playoffs again. But, you know, uh, my thing is why not why not be that change? You know, make make those non-believers believe. So, man, that, that's what drives me every single day, you know, to, to come to work and you know, put my best foot forward no matter how I'm feeling or no matter what the the, the last week, you know, told, you know, told the world how we look. Like, I know, you know, what type of player I am and I know what type of teammates that we have. So, no, it's about us believing um, in each other and just having that vision to not let, you know, what we see you know, blind us. Can you tell me about these practices when Aaron came back? He was coming off IR or he was able to – He was lighting up. First. But when you say that, like, we hear that and go, ah, oh, it's just the Jets putting that out there. You know, the Jet propaganda, you get us all excited again. And I, like, I want to believe. Believe me, I live and die with you guys all I, the time. I really, I really wish I could just show, show a few plays that I, like, like I recorded, like I was, I said, like, so this is on scout made, offense going against offense, the number one defense. Going against our defense. Um, like, obviously, you know, the pass rush is not going full speed. Yeah, so Quinn is not hitting him. He <laughs> had a little more time to make a throw, but just the, just him making that throw and that arm power, the, the precision, you know, it's just, it's a beautiful thing to see. He has a, he throws a great ball. You know, you see, a, it's like seeing a beautiful, like, cut ball, like a curve ball. It's like, like dang, like, whew. Well, there was to get him back on the field. There was a line in Hard Knocks with you over the summer where it was like, "That's an Aaron Rodgers throw right there." Yeah. I mean, it's he's it's some things you know you play this game long enough, you you, you learn the X's and O's, but then you really start to figure out like with your body, how can I like tweak a certain mechanic or tweak a certain thing to put myself in the right position? So, like some of the throws he make and like the way he throw them, like he he knows exactly what he's doing. Like he, no matter. I mean, you think about the scout team offense, like some of the guys have even played a game and they out there looking like all pros you get, you're getting me excited again so, so man it's it's great man you know, we're excited for it so um you know football is 100 percent injury rate so we can't guarantee nobody's going to get hurt like we know how those things work but you know we just got to go out there and, and like i said make make our fans make the people that's in our community believe and see the way we like the way we play they can envision us holding up a Super Bowl trophy. I thought you had another phenomenal season, but I'll say this, CJ: if you caught some of those interceptions that uh, hit nah, you in the head, you'd be first team All Pro. No, uh, I'm, I'm definitely. I got to work on my angle. <laughs> I got caught some weird angles this year on, on some of those interception drops. So, like we said, man, can't make any excuses. I got to. I'm gonna come back with them. We're going. We're going five plus next year. I love it. Now, Quincy Williams. I think. I mean, what a story, right? Uh, you know, a waiver wire claim, and and he comes in. It's oh, it's just Quentin's brother, and all of a sudden. He's gotten better and better each season, culminating with first-team All-Pro this year. He he credits you 
for his development. He said, without C.J. Mosley, I wouldn't be where I am right now. One, what does that mean to you? And two, what is it about Quincy's game that has really stood out when you've seen his development? Yeah, um, it, it means a lot to me. You know, I'm, I'm more of a leader by example. Over the past few years, I've definitely grown more to the, the talking role, just, you know, just how things have worked out. So um, when he says that, you know, that just shows that, man, I just, when I come to work with that mindset of, you know, like I was saying, like whether I'm hurting or we just lost the week before, you know, me coming to work with that same mentality to to put my best foot forward. And and at the end of the day, like when I play these when I play these games and I'm on the field and I'm giving everything I got, at the end of the day, it's for my teammates. So that's so when he says things like that, you know, it just it sheds light that all right, like it paid off. Like that's that's all I want to do is just you know give the game uh, to the young guys the way that it was brought to me. So. You know, for him to you know get his first his first nod as an All Pro first team, I told him, "Hey man, you you did something that I couldn't even do. So now now I got something to look forward to try to you know compete with you again. So you know the way he plays and his expectations and his level, um, his high level drive and you know him playing making plays, you no know, that that drives me to try to keep going to keep keep being better. So we we actually like competing against each other and making each other better every single day. So it's exciting. Speaking of All Pros, I mean Sauce Gardner, two years in the NFL, two straight first team All Pros. Yeah. What makes him so great when you watch him up close? Uh, his consistency. He works. He works on his game. Works on his craft. He works on his footwork. All the hand things. And um, now he's a he's a very smart smart cornerback, especially for a young guy. Even last year, like he he understood what was going on. So now we about to be in year three of our defense. It's, it's time for him. To Let's go. Catch some yes. Yeah. Bo- yeah. Both yeah. of you guys, right? <laughs> <laughs> I know you're here on behalf of C Club. Tell us all about it. So C Club is a subscription based company. So you think about Ticketmaster, StubHub. Um, you don't have to subscribe, but when you buy a ticket at the end, it's a lot of fees. It's a lot of you know markups at the end. So with C Club, it's a it's a one time subscription base. Um, right now they're doing a promo code of CJ, my name, and it's fifty seven percent off on CClub.com. So if you once you subscribe, you look for a ticket. Uh, it can be anything: arena, basketball games, football, theaters, concerts, so catch games, just games. So just like ticket, I said all everything's open, but. The thing is, there's no hidden fees. So the, the price is the price. And the only way C Club makes money is from a subscription. So you sign up, um, promo codes to CJ, type that in. It's 57% off for the first year. Then after that, you just buy tickets with no, mark- with no markups and fees. I love it. CJ, on behalf of all the Jet fans listening, thank you for everything that you have done. I cannot wait to watch you guys back out there next year. And please get us in the playoffs and that trial. Let's. Let's win a championship because someone like you who's been in the league a long time and has embraced being a Jet. We appreciate everything you do. And we just we want we want to believe, man. We really do. Hey, we beat everybody in division, so now it's time to go make the playoffs. Let's go. Let's go. CJ Bosey's my guest. Jake Asman with you, presented by Roan Apparel. Quick break, and we're back here in Vegas.